Hallelujah. He's really a little. Children have really been doing a good job. Amen. 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 Music and all that. Everything is good. Hallelujah. It's all the David. We should appreciate it. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, let's uh, see the heart of God. What is God's heart? If you see, uh, see always the Old Testament, uh, the word, if you see carefully, if you read Old Testament carefully, that reveals God's heart. Because uh, when David was there, and King David, he is a man after God's own heart. But how did he find that? By reading those five books of the Bible, those, that days, there was no New Testament that time. Only five books were there. By reading that, he understood the heart of God. Even Jesus also, when he time, same five books were present. Just by reading that, he understood Father's heart. So that's why for us also, whenever you read that, spend time to know the heart of God. You know. So I was reading um, Exodus. A lot of things God is revealing. How the way how God thinks about us. See, um, God always uh, wants to be um, a father. He wants to be our father. And he wants all of us to be his children. And he wants <clears throat> all of us to be under his care so that we can be safe and we can be protected and we can have a good life. That's what God's heart. Every father's heart is for children is that. To keep them safe, to protect them and provide them and uh, give them joy and fulfill all their desires, right? So that is uh, what every father's heart is. So um, here, how do you know that? Because whenever he was talking to, uh, speaking to Abraham and Moses, that's what he was all the time insisting, uh, is that I will give you Canaan, and which is uh, uh, milk and honey flows in that. So what is, what, what do you understand by that? You know, it means his heart for his children to live in a good country where there is riches. Milk and honey is that saying, riches, it speaks about riches. So he doesn't want his uh, children to suffer. He always wants his children to have abundance and prosperity. And also, he was telling them all the time, like, uh, not to become slaves. That's not the heart of God. He wants his children to be free. Hallelujah. Amen. That's our God's heart for us. He wants all of us to be free. Not to be in bondage. Not to become slaves. To slaves to sin. Or slaves to the devil. And he wants us to be free. It means how that freedom comes to all of us. When we are under the care of our father, we actually experience real freedom. People think that if I live by myself, I can, uh, they think that is freedom. <laughs> but that's not, that is, a, we are deceiving ourselves, but that never be a freedom. Actually living by ourselves, is a bondage. We go into the bondage. We go into the slavery. Actually, real freedom comes when you live under your father. See, because, because of the love the father has towards children, love sets you free. That's what the, he was just singing this, you know, the, the song. Love came down. Love came down and rescued me and set me free. Father's love actually gives you freedom. Because he loves you, what he, he sacrificed himself for you to have everything. Amen. Love always
always involves sacrifice. That's what he did. Jesus sacrificed his life for us to have healing, have salvation, to have riches, all that he, he achieved by sacrificing his life. That's why we really feel free when you are under Father. Amen. He really, you, even you see our children, in small children, you notice them. Whenever the parents are around them, how do they behave? They behave very confident. They behave joyful, peaceful, and free. They feel free. Whenever the parents are around them, they feel so protected, secured, and free. When parents are not around them, when you leave them, they live in fear. They're not secure. They don't know who, who is going to say what, what, what harm is going to come to them, who is going to rob them, who is going to steal them. They live in fear. That's why we have a tool. We're really looking for freedom. Come under the Father. You really have freedom. Slavery is something like this. You don't have choice. In slavery, how it looks, you don't have choice anymore. It's not about what you like, what you want. It's all about what that slave master, the master, wants. It's all about the master. It's not about you anymore. Slavery is that. The, whatever, like you slave them, you serve them, for them to have good life, it's not for you anymore. That's what slavery. And the masters, they want benefit. They want things to be done by using your services. They don't care about your welfare anymore. They don't care about what you have, what you eat, what your blessings, whether you are doing well or not, no. They only care about themselves, their goodness, their happiness, and you need to, at the expense of your hard work. That's what slavery is. Even today, some jobs are like that. It's like a slavery. You work hard, you get very little. You paid very little, but you work hard. That's a slavery. Actually, that's a slavery. But there are some jobs, they pay you very good. Work is not that much too. Workload is less, but they pay you very good. That is actually a real job. That's what our father wants us to have. It's not slavery. Our father do not want us to be slaves. Hallelujah. If you know your rights, you claim your right. Claim your rights. <coughs> Seek that kind of jobs. Then, um, and he was very jealous for his children. For his, you know, that's why when they were in slavery in, the, in Egypt, God was so angry. And, um, but he could not do till they cry. Because even though God do not like the, your hardship, God do not like your problems, God is angry at the devil, but he, he cannot do till you come to him, approach him, and cry out to him. So that's what God was waiting for the children of Israel to cry out to him. Even though they were in bondage, but God could not do anything. He was just watching them. When these people wake up, when they wake up and come to me. That's why he waited, waited. At last when the slavery becoming hard, hard, they could not take the pain anymore. Then they came to God and cried out to God. Then immediately God responded to that cry. And he came down to rescue them. When he was talking to Moses, you can see his heart, how zealous he is for his children. How much he's angry at Pharaoh. You can see that when he was talking to Moses. You have, you have to see the words, what they used in the word. 
that I go through worry everything because I really want to know his heart. I go through the, the terminology, the words he's using, everything that shows his pain, his anger, and his passion, his love. Hallelujah. And then when he was talking to Moses, you understand how much God hates slavery. And then um, he was telling that uh, to Moses to go. And then, um, okay. Then one thing I really want you to see here, whenever you want to, you know, when God wants to use you, there are some things God is, uh, um, cannot use you unless there is some things you need to do there. For Moses, you know what God said, when he saw the burning bush there, and he just attracted to the burning bush, he was coming close to the burning bush. That is presence of God actually. God was there. He, 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 he understood that because he was calling Moses from that burning bush. He understood the presence of God. And it's just he was going closer to that. When he was going closer to that, he, God said, God stopped him, said that, remove your sandals now. Because the ground where you are standing is holy ground. Remove your sandals. Today that speaks to me something. Where did you really want to have closeness with God, intimacy with God, righteousness. Is Righteousness brings closeness with God, intimacy. When you really want to carry the presence of God, when you want God to be with you, then God wants us to be righteous. That's why God told Moses, remove your sandals. Means you've got to look holy to have me, to have me. Then, you know, he removed his sandals and he went closer. And then he said something. What is in your hand? He said everything, the plan. He said to Moses, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to rescue you, the children of Israel. But you've got to go. You have to face Pharaoh. You have to speak my word. Everything, all the plan is done. And then Moses is worried. How? How is it possible? I'm just, I'm just nobody. How is it possible? How can I even face Pharaoh? Yes. You know how? How you are going to do this? It's only I'm telling is the power of God. We cannot do these things with our own strength. We need God's power. We need supernatural power to have freedom from the devil, to be delivered from slavery, bondage, I'm telling you. Bondage here. You know, 400 years of bondage, it's not easy, beloved. It's not easy. You understand how powerful the devil became. Because so many years, when someone is ruling your life, uh, for so many years, it means for so many generations, some, in some families, there's some bondages are in generations. Even that kind can be broken only with the power of God. With God's power, it can be broken. So that's what, you know, God is equipping Moses to break the power of Pharaoh over children of Israel. Okay? So before we go that, I just want you to take you to this uh, uh, something uh, in Romans, let's read uh, Romans. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 12. What about us, our condition today? You know, are we, are we still in slavery? Are we still in slavery? You can question yourself. Are we still in bondage today? Are we still uh, struggling in slavery, uh, after coming to Christ, I want you to know the truth here. Okay, what shall we say then 
Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we, who died to sin, live any longer in it? Do you really believe this? Do you, even for me is also eye open. Even you know all these years, we've been serving, serving God, reading, reading the word, reading the word. Really, are we really enjoying the freedom from our God? Because you got to receive this revelation today. This will set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's look into this word. You know, certainly not. How shall we die to sin, live any longer in it? Apostle Paul was telling in Rome, in Ro for Romans, uh, we, we died. How can you live in sin today? We died to sin. Then those who died to sin, you will not no longer continue in sin anymore. Tell me, when did you die? When did you die to sin? When did I die to sin? When, when you died to sin, when did I die to sin? Let's see. Continue. Uh, do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? When you are baptized, you, you died to sin. You died to your, it means your old man dead. Your old man was crucified. The day you baptized, that's what we say. Don't you know that? Don't you know that? When you are baptized, you are baptized into the death of Christ. When Jesus died, you died. When Jesus died, you died with him. That's what you believe. That's what you believe. To what you believe, to make it conform to what you believe, and you take and baptism. Yeah. Right? Yes. So through baptism, that what you believe is going to manifest in you. Your old man died. Your old man was crucified. So after your old man died, how can you live in sin again? That's what his question today. That's what he was asking that question. How can you continue in sin when you already died? Right? Then, um, therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Everybody, when you believed you died with Christ, you also must believe you rose again with Amen. Christ. After death, resurrection comes. When you believe you died, you also believe you are rose again. It means, Amen. when you are rose again means, you have a new life. You are new creation in Christ. When Christ risen, his position is not here. In the heavenly, seated with the Father on the throne. You are seated with him on the throne. That's your position today. Okay? Then, um, next please. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Slaves of sin. Your old man was crucified, do you believe that? Then, what is happening then? Why still sin is bothering us? Why they are still struggling? We are struggling with sin. Why the sinful thoughts? Why sinful nature? Why the sinful desires? From where it is coming? Those are coming from the devil. It's not from your old man. Do you get it? 
Do you get it? Yes. We are struggling still. Temptations are coming. But it's not from your old man. It's from the But you know what? Devil is convincing all of us that we are fighting with our old man. That is what we were fooled and deceived. But actually, our war is with the devil, not with the flesh and blood anymore. Our war is with the devil, not with yourself. But you know what devil is doing is keeping you busy engaged in in the wrong battle. Engaging your war with the wrong. Wrong and he's hiding. He's hiding. He's keeping you busy with the wrong battle. You never get the victory. Because that wrong person is not existing. Then how do you get victory? Because you're not hitting the right one. You're not fighting with the right enemy. You're fighting with the wrong enemy who is not existing. That way, enemy keeping us busy, fighting you, making you to fight with the person who is not existing. Fighting you with the old man who has already died, who was already crucified, is not existing and he is hiding behind watching Tamasha. You understand? He's watching because you're never going to get victory at all because you're doing the wrong battle. You're not fighting with the right devil, right enemy. Then how you're going to get victory? If you know who is your enemy, the battle, the right battle, then weapons are available. God is going to give you weapons now. Hallelujah. Do you agree with this word? Yes. Amen. Do you still have doubts? No. Is your old man died? Yes. Is your old man crucified? Yes. Then with whom you are fighting now? Devil. Not yourself. Because fighting you with your own self is a wrong battle. You're never going to get the victory. Yourself becoming your enemy you are never going to become victory. You are fighting with the devil. Not yourself anymore. Stop. Stop struggling with yourself. If you recognize it, God is going to give you weapons today. Amen. God is going to give you weapons. Amen. Because to fight the devil, weapons are available. To fight yourself, there are no weapons. There are no weapons. Because that is not existing. Hallelujah. The people who are not in Christ, then their own self is an enemy, but God is not expecting them to fight without being, without being renewed in Christ, without being saved. There was no such battle. Are you getting it? I don't know. Your faces are blank. I don't know. How many of you really understood? <laughs> yes? Please, from now onwards, when you understand, Amen. Say that. Amen. 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 Then I know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to speak about weapons. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the weapons? Yes, yes. 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 I am telling you, lot easy. Fighting with devil is easy now. Yes. It's easy to know. <laughs> You're never going to lose this battle. Amen. <coughs> because everything God prepared for us. Amen. Everything. Because when you are really fighting with the devil, God never leave you. He's not there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, then Moses, right? Come back to Moses here. So Moses, now God is preparing Moses to fight the devil, mm -hmm. not himself. <laughs> you understand? To fight the devil now. So real war begins. Okay? 
So to fight Pharaoh, for them that's a Pharaoh king, but to us is a spiritual meaning today. Our enemies are not people, okay? Our enemy is the devil, right? So the principalities or whatever it is. So whatever it is today, you apply to your own life now. You apply. If you have any bondage in your life, okay? So it is just like a bondage. See, this devil kept them, Pharaoh, kept them for so many years in slavery. And that's a bondage, right? So if any bondage in your life today, in generations, your family life, whatever the demons are working in your family, in your generation, like bondage, keeping you like slaves and torturing your family. Now, God is sending Moses to fight that demons. Yes. Hallelujah. So now the same weapons what God is giving you, Moses, God wants to give you the same weapons today. Hallelujah. To fight your demons in your family life, whatever it is in your life. Okay? So um, then for that, what, what first God asked is, Moses, now Moses have to have that relationship with God. For that, God is preparing Moses. Moses, remove your sandals. Okay, you are coming into my presence now. You have to remove your sandals. Come on. Righteousness is very important when you are fighting the devil. Did you see in the Ephesians chapters, you are full, put on a full armor of God. What is the breastplate of righteousness? Main your heart, the vital parts are covered by that breastplate. That's the main thing God speaks to you today. Righteousness. Righteous life. Okay? And then, and the next thing God is asking, Moses, what is in your hand? He asked Moses. God is seeing that what is in his hand. Right? And that God wants Moses to speak out. Moses, what is in your hand? So, um, let's see that. I'm telling you one, one of the bondage I want to mention it to you is that sexual sin is a one bondage. So there's so many bondages, but one of the bondage I'm saying is really slavery. Okay? And that bondage is sometimes you are thinking all this time fighting with the wrong person, but you're not fighting with the devil, you're fighting yourself. Oh my god, I'm getting, I'm getting these thoughts. This, this evil, evil, unclean, unclean thoughts. And you're fighting the wrong one all this time. But that's not you, beloved. If you're baptized in Christ, it's not you thinking that. You have a nature of Christ, your new creation. Those thoughts are demonic. Devil is putting those thoughts. Yes. Stop fighting yourself. That's the devil. Okay? So then, you know, um, sometimes the thoughts come haunt you like this. Day and night, they will haunt you. You know, sexual thoughts are like that. They will haunt you after you, till you submit, till you surrender to that. It is like that. Example from the Bible, Joseph. What Joseph faced is that spirit, sexual spirit. Is a uh, Potiphar's wife. How, how did she is after him? Morning and night. Morning and evening. Day and night. That's how that thoughts haunt you day and night. Right? But that is a spirit. That's a spirit. That's not you. That is a spirit. <coughs> and then, um, okay, for that, now be ready for the weapons. Then, um, God asked Moses, what is in your hand? Exodus chapter 4, verse 34. <laughs> Exodus chapter 4. Uh -huh. no. Sorry, sorry. Exodus chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. See the 3, three and 4? <coughs> yeah. He said, what is, what is in your hand? Then he says, uh, stuff. Right? Then uh, Mo, uh, God asked Moses, cast it on the ground. Cast it on the ground. In some versions it says, 
Throw it down. Throw it down. You know, you need to really understand the meaning here. I really blew my mind away today. I was thinking about it. You know, what he's really um, holding on to so many years, you know, for the Israelites, um, sheep, they are shepherds. All Israelites, the mainly, their main, uh, uh, their main work is uh, shepherding. So, and he was holding on to the shepherd, shepherds, that staff is a very important uh, because we don't know about this, that's why we don't know the value of uh, uh, staff. But for a shepherd, staff is very uh, valuable to them and it's very important to them. To take care of sheep, that is the main part for them. With the staff only, they will lead the sheep. Okay? So when he is holding on to that, God asked Moses, it's very like an interesting. Moses, what is that? In your hand, he shows, throw it down. You know, for him, in his mind, I'm thinking, in his mind, for us, because we know the story, but we are cool and, you know, uh, nothing happening to us. But for him, when he, he did not know what God is going to do with the staff, he did not have any clue. But when he was hearing for the first time, God is telling him, throw it down. He feels that, how can God ask me to throw it down like that? He's, in his mind, he's thinking, he must be thinking, maybe God wants me to give it up. Right? Give it away. It's like a giving away. It's something like giving away. He, he must be not thinking that, oh, he's going to change that stuff and give me back. He, he must, because we know the story, we are thinking like that. But that, uh, for him, he must be thinking, this is so important to me. God is asking me to throw it. Maybe he might take it away from me. Maybe he doesn't want me to use it anymore. That's what. Maybe he doesn't want me to use this stuff anymore. So that's why throw it. Right? <coughs> so, um, but, and he became a serpent. <laughs> He never thought that what he was holding on, actually, he ran away. When he saw, when he saw serpent, he, that, that was very close to him all this time. But that very thing, when it became a serpent, he ran away <laughs> from it. You know what? Till you really surrender something God is asking you to surrender. You really do not know all these years what you are holding on. Yeah. You are blinded to see. You are blinded to see. All these years you are holding on to something and that something will make you to run away. That very something will make you to run away. Amen. When you give it to God, your eyes will be open. You see. When you give it to God, till you give it to God, you don't know what you're holding on. Till you give it to God, you don't know what you're holding on. Yes. When you give it to God, you will see your eyes will be opened. You only might want to run away. You feel that, Lord, only I want what you want. I don't trust in myself anymore. I don't want what I want. It's not good for me. I might run away from it. But I want what you want. Yours is best. Amen. Yours is best for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, when he did that, you know what God said? Something God did. God anointed Moses. After he threw it down, I think God anointed Moses. That's why. It's not about the staff. What God said? You touch it. Okay. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. God anointed Moses, right? Anointing comes when you pay the price. After that, after that, things are different. After that, things are different. When you 
touch that, it become a rock. Hallelujah. Anything, beloved. What really is good for us, we don't know. Surrender everything to God. When you surrender, God turns things beautiful for you. Amen. God makes everything beautiful for you. Amen. You actually receive power from God, anointing from God. Then things will be different. Amen. Things will be different. And now, you know why all these things God wants to do in Moses? Because there is a big mission waiting for him. He needed that. He needed supernatural power of God to face Pharaoh. Amen. Hallelujah. To face Pharaoh. That's why I'm telling today, you know, we are, we are, we, some of the things we are fighting in our homes, in our families, in our personal lives. But do you ever realize that you need God's power? Do you need his power to overcome your battles? Because I'm so much convinced these days, uh, Lord, I, I, without, I'm, I'm not giving importance to receive power. But I'm giving importance to, I want to have victory, victory, victory. What to do, what to do. I'm running, running all these things. But the key, very key, what gives you victory, giving least importance to that. What really gives you victory is power. You have to receive power from God. Supernatural power from God. <coughs> because you cannot win your battles. You cannot win your challenges by your own strength, by your own wisdom, your own mouth, your own actions, your own intelligence will not give you victory. You need power from God, supernatural power from God. Hallelujah. Give importance, give everything of yourself to receive this power. You will be survived. You can survive. You can have victory. You will come out of your problems. I'm really seeking very desperately, Lord. Show me the ways. How can I receive? <coughs> and I, that's why I'm reading this Exodus. Because this is something really speaking to me. God wants to give you power. I'm going to this book. You also go through the Exodus. So I'm asking God, give me power, supernatural power. Then, after Moses did that, God anointed him. Now, he's ready to face battle. So he sent him to first go, go to Pharaoh. You know, now you we are also fighting the devil. We are fighting different devils, right? We are fighting. Mm -hmm. So when you face the devil like this, very important is Moses to have connection with God. That relationship with God is very important for him. Okay? And because constantly he had to hear God. What do you do when, when he faced Pharaoh? What is going to speak? He has to have a word to speak. Don't speak your own words. It will not do any good. Hear God. Hear from him. Receive direction from God. So God gave him words to speak to Pharaoh. And then exactly what God said, he went and told Pharaoh. You know, one other thing you need to notice here, the words what God is telling Pharaoh, actually Moses is believing, got to believe what God said. If you don't believe, you can't speak them out. You understand? You got to believe what God is telling you. Faith is very important when you are fighting battles. You got to believe the promise of God. You got to believe the direction what God is giving you that will give you victory. And Moses believed that because he believed 
He is able to face Pharaoh. Otherwise, he gets scared to face Pharaoh because he believed God's word. That's why he is able to, with courage, he went to Pharaoh. And then, and because he believed, what he said, you know, uh, you tell Pharaoh, let my people go. If you don't let my people go, the frogs are going to come and destroy all your crops or whatever. You know, uh, sometimes swans and, uh, you know, gnats and all, flies, all that. So one by one, all the plagues. But first, before that happening, Moses had to believe that's going to happen. Before he really speak to God. First, he got to believe that. Oh, this is God said. When this is going to happen, this is going to happen. <coughs> is, is, is Moses' role is there, there. His faith is there. His relationship is there. His obedience is there. Okay? He went. He went and spoke in those words. And because he believed it, it happened. Exactly what he said that happened. Because he, he spoken with faith. Sometimes without faith, don't speak. If you have faith, with faith, release such words. If, if you release negative words, uh, uh, don't expect you have victory because after releasing negative words. Release what God said to you. Then you will have victory. <laughs> okay? And then after that, and one more thing you notice here. Uh, God already telling Moses, Moses, you, you're going to do this, but Pharaoh is not going to leave you. And he's, his heart is going to be hardened. And after so many, finally, eventually, when I touch his firstborn, then he's going to leave you. But then, when God knows that, then why didn't he touch firstborn in the beginning itself? Why Moses had to go through all these stages? Why? He could have just done in the first time, right? He could have done, okay, because God knows he's not going to leave. Only when the firstborn is killed, then Pharaoh sur surrenders. Till then, Pharaoh will not surrender. God knows that. But still, why didn't he give them victory in the first time? Why Moses had to go through these, these stages one by one, one by one? Why it has to take time? We have answer? Preparation. Each level. Praise God. You know what? The power, how much is needed to destroy your devil is not going to come to you at one time. You will receive power as you obey, as you grow in the Lord, you will be able to handle the power of God. Amen. Do you understand now? Yes. See, every one of you, you have certain devils to fight, but the power, what is needed for you to destroy the devil is not going to be given to you at one time. In the beginning, there is a process for you to go. And you have to be persistent. And Moses, you know, you should never take vacation in the between. When you are fighting one battle, don't take vacation in between. Vacation means, don't get me wrong, vacation means, I'm not asking you to not to go anywhere. No, I'm asking you to don't stop fighting the devil. Amen. Constant. Yes, constant. Be, once you start something, one issue, you start praying. Don't stop in the middle. Keep praying, keep praying till you see complete victory. Amen. Okay? So for Moses, he went and he said, and then he came back, and he, uh, he came, when he comes back, what God is doing? Okay, more power now. More power. Second time you receive more power now. He's giving him more power. And his faith also increasing. His obedience also increasing. Giving him more power. Okay. He's going and facing Pharaoh. Didn't work out. 
It is okay. Destroyed happening, but he is not obeying. Pharaoh is not obeying. Okay, come back, Moses. Come on, have fellowship with me. I'm going to give you more. Amen. I'll give you more. I'll give you more. Come on, here, take it. Take my power more and go back again. Hallelujah. Go back again and fight. Go back and fight the devil again. God is after you. God is after you. He's not leaving you. Because he wants to see victory too. Amen. Yeah. Go back. And he went back. And more power. Okay, what happened? Here you need to understand something. Okay, Pharaoh is not obeying. But did you see what is happening to Pharaoh? What is happening? Pharaoh looks so stubborn and hard, like a hard-hearted. He's not, uh, you're not receiving your answer. The devil looks so strong, very stubborn. But you don't see any answer. But don't think nothing is happening. What is happening to Pharaoh? Did you see what is happening? His territory is getting destroyed, right? Holy Egypt is getting destroyed, no? God started touching everything in Egypt. Even though Pharaoh looks so stubborn, but his territory is getting destroyed. Don't think that. Even though you don't see answer to your prayer, but there is something God is Amen. destroying. Amen. You are not noticing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what else is happening to Pharaoh? Something else. Pharaoh is doing that. He's also calling magicians. Magicians to do what Moses is doing. So they did. They did. You know, uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see those. Exodus chapter 8 verse 7. Exodus chapter 8 verse 7. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. Did you see that? Moses brought frogs, right? And what magicians also brought, same thing. Magicians did so with their enchantments <laughs> and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. So, um, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. If devil is also showing power. So that's why devil also has power. Don't uh, think devil do not have power at all. Devil has power. Right? So that's why magicians could do that uh, thing. That's why today some people say that, oh, in our religion also we are seeing miracles. We also see some answers. But you know what happened? Okay, they did. Right? And after that, what happened? Exodus chapter 8, verse 18 and 19. Next time when Moses went, did another thing, then he also called magicians again to do that. Same thing what Moses did, right? Exodus chapter 8, verse 18 and 19. So, now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lies, but they could not. So then there were lies on a man and beast. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Always there is a limit. Huh? Devil power has a limit. Devil has power, but there is a limit. Not more than that. Amen. Devil has no power more than that. At some point, he can show his power. Beyond that point, no power. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, and you know, uh, Moses came back again. And God gave him power, and Moses went back, then he could not do anything. Hallelujah. I'm telling you today, God wants you to receive power in a such a level, David cannot stand your power. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't leave your fight in the middle. Amen. Keep coming, keep growing the love of God. Keep growing in the power of God. Keep growing. That's what I want you to encourage. People discouraged because they are not seeing the victory and you are stopping your fight in the middle. Amen. Please keep coming Amen. for prayer meetings. Amen. Be diligent. Don't give up your fight. Even though you 
don't see answer, keep coming because God is going to fill you with more power Amen. that Amen. day. Devil cannot touch your power. Finally, um, God gave him power, and then Pharaoh could not stand at all. And then he let them go, and then how they came out? With the plunder. Not only their answer, extra, more extra, jewelry, ornaments, they plundered Egypt. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. You know, so do you fight the right one now? Yes. Stop fighting yourself. <coughs> Stop fighting yourself. Fight the devil. And tools are given. The main thing is prayer. Prayer. Because Moses could hear God because he's had the connection Moses and God have. That is important. Prayer life is important. Have fellowship with God. Keep hearing God every day. Keep reading God every day. God speaks to you through the word. God speaks to you through messages. God speaks to you in any way. Be in the presence of God. God will speak to you. Hallelujah. And fight the devil through prayer. Patient, be patient, be persistent. And you will see your victory. You will Amen. see your victory. Amen. Hallelujah. I have seen my victory. How many years I fought my battle. How many years. But it will not take for you the problem. Because I did not know how to fight. That's why it took very long. But I'm teaching you the victory. If you really listen to this. And take this and practice it. It won't take much time. You will have victory. In your battle. Let's start. <coughs> Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. More power. God wants to give us more power. Prayer life. Discipline yourself to have prayer life. Every one of you. Discipline yourself. Give up things. The things are really hindering you. Your walk with God. Give up those things in your life. Set your mind on God. Set your focus on God. If job is becoming your hindrance, think about that. Some people do jobs, three jobs, you know. If that's taking your relationship away from God, do you think is any good for you? Is that good for you? Sharabalandra Karamana Bala Karamana Bala Karamana Sharabalandra Karamana Bala 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 Karamana B
Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, God is really telling me, I have a great plan about this church. God is telling, I have a great plan about each one of you in this church. Each one of you. I want to use you mightily, God is telling me. There's nothing is impossible to me. There's nothing, every, every problem will bow down to you. Oh, Rabba Shikara Every problem. God wants to give you victory over every problem, every challenge you have today. Oh, Rakara Mandra Bilakara Mandra Bilakara, Sharabala Mandra Mandra Bilakara Mandra Bilakara Mandra Oh, Rabba Baba Baba Kara Mandra Bilashi Kara Mandra Bilasya. Receive power, more power, power. Oh, Rabba Kara Mandra Bilasya. More obedience, more faith. Obedience, faith. Prayer life. Humble yourself. More humility. Humility, beloved. More humble. 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 Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Oh, patiently wait for your victory. That's what the Bible is saying that humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he will lift you up in his time. Let God lift you up till then you humble. Even it is a, you know, such a uh, not good position for you right now, you know. You feel that you are so thrown down and rejected and, you know, whatever it is, insult or humiliation you are going through. It's, think about this. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. In the right time, God will lift you up. Amen. Let us respond to God as this song going by. After that, we'll pray for the people.